Hey guys, Julie Mayfield here with Mike Missy Realty. Wanted to do a little bit of a video series here. Um, this content's gonna be coming from the Texas Realtor Magazine, uh, episode or subscription, April 2019. And I, I run across all these really great articles all the time, I love this magazine. Um, and sometimes it's good information for my clients, sometimes it's great information for my colleagues. So I just wanted to start doing some series to get out in front of everybody and kind of um, share some of the content that I have read about. So um, one of the things I read was, um, how to be a realtor worthy of referrals. I love this one. Um, when I first brought was brought on to Mike Music Realty, I love the fact that they were so on top of like, I really didn't have to do anything. We had a, a client concierge that really just asked for our referrals for us and, and had our clients write great things for us. But um, I was, you know, the 16th agent on the team. And so we were able to do a lot more hands-on um, services like that but as we've grown to be such a huge brokerage now which I'm super grateful for that as well um, a lot of the little details like like that has um, has gone away and it's now up to the agent themselves to be more on top of asking for those referrals so um, um, some of the things that I was reading in this article it says be observant of the less obvious. So um, most people expect you to learn about their kids and their pets um, and so um, different things like that, paint colors that they like and, and so forth. So if you notice these things as they talk about them, like they walk through the house, maybe they have mentioned that they really don't like the dark cabinets or they don't like the dark flooring um, or they really do love, you know, light cabinets and the, um, the, the light in the house and so forth. If you'll make note of that and then make note to mention it at your next showing um, that you've noticed that when we walk into this house, okay, I know that you don't really care for the lighter color cabinets, you know, but um, we can always get that addressed for you if the fill of the home is great or, or there's other issues or maybe you walk into a house and you go, okay, Janice, I know you really don't love this home at all because it has nothing that you like, right? It, the flooring isn't the right color, the cabinets aren't the right, you know, style. So, um, just communicating to your client that you have heard them and that you hear them and that you are aware of what their needs are. Um, and then let them communicate to you if they really like the fill of the home. No, this is going to be fine. We like the fill. We feel like we can address that on our own. And then that's great. So, um, don't make assumptions. So, um, you may have a client that, um, you, they've mentioned something about hating mowing lawns, right? And so you assume as an agent that they don't like anything with a large yard. Um, when the reality is if you dug a little deeper and asked some more questions to your clients, you might find that even though they don't really like maintaining a yard is not their thing, they may like the idea of an HOA with small yards that are maintained uh, for them through the HOA service. So, or um, they may want a acreage and he just doesn't like a lawnmower, a traditional lawnmower, but he's okay with like a riding lawnmower. Um, so things like that would be things that you would need to, you know, dive a little deeper and find out from your clients. Um, some more questions. Um, and then really communicate. Uh, maybe your clients are happy texting with you, but the agent on the other side isn't somebody who really prefers a text. And so she'll text you and or call you and you have ignored her call because you're like, oh, why can't you just text me? Um, that you're not being of service to your clients if you're not being a good communicator to the other agent. So if you have another agent that really prefers to have a phone call instead of a text message, don't get annoyed by that. Take the time to take their call and communicate with that agent um, and, and, and be all you can be as a realtor. Don't, don't look at it as it's all about you and what you need. It's more about what your clients and what your clients need from you as an agent. So keep that in mind. Um, try being transparent. Um, let's see, daily updates um, from, from to your clients. Uh, Mike's policy is, whether you know this or not, um, Every Friday, we're supposed to be calling all of our executed clients, whether they're buyers or sellers, and communicating with them. So, 
Um, a lot of times when we get the deal done, there's not a lot to talk about, um, whether it be a listing or it be an executed buyer find something to talk about. You know, this magazine, for example, is a great way to reach out. I have um, some drip campaigns I've uh, created to um, give you content for things to reach back out to your clients um, after you've executed them. So use that content, use those reminders that I'm sending to you that if you implement that drip campaign, it'll automatically send you some reminders of things that you can talk to your clients about so that they don't feel like you've just abandon them after they've gotten executed. So, um, and then um, also sometimes your clients have some unrealistic expectations. If you're not communicating that they're not being realistic, then you're not doing your job. So um, be aware of, of letting your clients know, you know, it, it, it's not okay to be mean, but it's okay to be honest. So if your clients have some unrealistic expectations, you definitely need to address that with them. Um, and then don't wait for the feedback, ask for it. You get close to the closing date and it's time to get there. You need to let them know you need to bring your driver's license. You need to have your spouse. Um, these are the, some things you need to expect and you know, you're communicating about wiring instructions or, or cashier's check. And then you need to also finish up with saying, Hey, I'm going to be sending you a request for a referral. I would really love if you would just take 15 minutes of your time to look at that email and maybe like uh, post to some different sites or at least one of my sites so that I can um, continue to be a great agent for other people as well moving forward. So asking for that referral verbally is huge. Don't just send an email, actually ask for it and they'll more than likely do that for you. So here's just a couple of little tidbits and I hope that this went well. Um, this is my very first video that I did. So a um, little nervous, hopefully I didn't talk too fast. So anyways, um, stay tuned for some more great videos, hopefully. Thanks, bye.